Hi, it's Christy of So To Speak. One of the phrases I often use in training and coaching is let's look for the opportunity. So where a problem or a mistake may pop up, okay, where's the opportunity here? And so I had this master plan that my guest for the weekend of Father's Day was going to be my dad. We had a conversation in early May and I held off airing our conversation because I was like, what a great, what a great Father's Day gift. And then my computer screen went dark and it was in the shop for over a week. So what's the opportunity here, you might ask, is that I get to celebrate my dad twice. Pretty awesome stuff. So if you haven't figured it out by now, the next guest on the So To Speak Closet series is Dr. Tony Mandor. He is a retired urologist, a practicing reflexologist, and a lifelong piano player. My dad and I have a lovely conversation all about the power of music. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy our conversation. Being a product of the 50s, my parents thought that my sister and I should take piano lessons. I mean, this was not a question, not do you want to do this? It was you are taking piano lessons. So we both took piano lessons. We both hated piano lessons. And I stuck it out a little longer than Gail did. And finally, after two and a half years of taking these piano lessons with a really 1950s piano teacher where she slapped your knuckles if you hit the wrong key. And she, she was really the typical no, stereotype, no. strict piano teacher. Yeah. She Finally, had a tight bun. Yeah, she totally did, a hundred percent. Yeah, and like didn't and even hit five three. Sorry, I'm. You know where my brain goes, like super visual. That's who she was. This is who she was. <laughs> I'm not going to mention her name, but that's exactly who she was. Yeah, God rest her soul. Okay. So exactly. So she finally called my mom one day, and she was a friend of my mother's, an acquaintance, and she said, "Marie, you are wasting your money on this child." <laughs> so Marie said what do you mean, Helen? And she said, he does not want to play piano. He is never going to be able to play the piano. Give it up. So we had a discussion at dinner and my mother and father said, what's going on? We're spending money on these piano lessons. Now, mind you, my sister has already bailed. So it's now me. And I said, I have no desire to play the piano or take piano lessons. So they said, fine, it's done. And I said, okay, that's awesome. I felt great for about five years. Then I got into seventh grade and I really realized that I loved the piano and I wanted to do it again. So I said, I hate to say this guys, but I want to take piano lessons again. And they so wait, said- I want to pause you. So like, what was the change? Like what happened? Do you remember a moment of like what happened? I do. I remember trying to play the piano at my parents' house and I couldn't play that well. And it was kind of like, you know what, if you stuck this out a little longer, you would have been able to do this. So seventh grade comes along. I said, you know what, I'm going to tell you, I want to take piano lessons again. And there was a big discussion. And they said, okay, but this time it's going to be with a man. He's going to be strict. And I said, perfect. So I get this wonderful piano teacher who was not strict and he was just as lovable as can be. And the thing that really changed it for me was he said, don't worry about playing scales. Don't worry about playing the music that is typically thought of for piano lessons. Bring any kind of music that you like and I will teach you how to play it. It was a life changer. He let me bring on my own music and he was wonderful. And I finally got enough that I could now teach myself anything further because now I went into high school and I went to a high school that was college prep and it was very busy and I had lots to do. So I said to my parents, as much as I loved the fact that you let me take piano lessons again, I have to stop. So I stopped and I just taught myself. And that's my piano history. So you just taught yourself. So that's pretty remarkable. From there on. Right. From there on. But still, like, so what, how did you do that? Just practicing or what? practicing and I bought music and I kept on buying more and more music and played it and tried to listen to it and the kind of music that I loved and all of a sudden it happened. 
from so practicing. Great. So you're like the whole Malcolm Gladwell, you know, like the 10,000, what is it, hours of practicing something right. to create, like you just have to stick with that. Totally. I just stuck with it because I love it. No, you're no spring chicken, Dad, so you probably have clocked in 10,000 hours. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so what are some songs that you would love to share, like just a little behind the scenes trivia or story with people that are popular that may, we may not know? Okay, here's a song, very famous song. You'll all recognize it. It's written by Jerome Kern and um, Dorothy Fields. And the reason I bring this song up is that I've played in different places. And one of them was St. Luke's Home, which is right there in New Hartford. Um, they asked me to come and play for their, for their residents. And I remember sitting there initially, and there were a number of people sitting in the audience, all, all patients with their nurses, and many of them were with it, but some of them weren't. They were just sitting in wheelchairs, and they had open mouths, just like old people do, and they were kind of staring somewhere else. And I remember playing this. I started to play some songs, and some of them had some recognition, but the most memorable moment for me was I played this. Someday, when I'm feeling low, when the world is cold, I will feel the glow just thinking of you. And the way you look tonight. And I looked, and there's this woman sitting in a wheelchair with her mouth open. All of a sudden, tears are rolling down her cheeks. Now, tears are rolling down my cheek. And after I was all done, I went up to her and I said, I'm so glad you're here. And she was still kind of staring somewhere. She was somewhere else. And I said, but you seem to know that song that I played, The Way You Look Tonight. Tears came down. She looked at me and she said, my husband used to play the piano and he sang that to me all the time. And you brought it back to life. She came back to life because of music. She came back to life because of music. It was just the most amazing feeling to think, I touched one person. Obviously, other people love the music, especially those that were with it. But this lady who looked like she was somewhere else, and then her nurse came up to me and she said, she doesn't remember what she had for breakfast and you brought out a memory. All right? So powerful. That is music. That That's is what music, music does. It's, it's so powerful. And it's, oh, Dad, that story is so incredible. It reminds me, I know you, you know this, like when I was living in New York and I worked with Gary and we were doing New York Cares. So he's, he's the executive director of New York Cares now, but it's right. the, the huge volunteer program and nonprofit in New York. But he started New York Sings and we would, we would just bop around to different nursing homes and it was all standards like that. And the impact of music, especially with patients with dementia and Alzheimer's, like they would get up and just start moving and their aids would be floored. Unbelievable. Like, all I, all I could keep thinking when you were saying their mouths were open is like the, the individuals will come in with their mouths open, but then the aides will be the ones with their mouths open because they're just like, holy shit. Totally. Like, it's crazy. There was this totally. one woman, her name was Grace. Totally. She had a silver bob. And after we sang, we sang, um, what's that Broadway song? Um, it has Broadway in the, the title. Uh, Give my regards to yes, Broadway. Totally. Give my regards. So we sang that and it got all like snazzy and everything. And she took my hand like she had known me for years. And because afterwards we stayed and had cookies and stuff. And she sat down and was sharing. You would have loved it. She was sharing all. Okay. I'm pausing because my dad believes that. He was meant to be in New York in the 1930s. And the reason I'm saying I'm pausing is because Grace shared with me all of her like fun moments in New York in the 1930s. And all of the, the like when she was young, she was bopping around all the bars and the clubs. And it was all from hearing the music. And it's just so, yeah. it's so powerful. It's so true. Yeah, I did. I played another time at the Lutheran home, which is up in Clinton. And, um, the lady that was in charge of it was so empowered that she had to get this going. And she would get up there and she would try to get them singing 
and she would say, oh my God, we have this music. I, and I finally said to her, you know what? The music will do it itself. I said, just let the music do it itself. And she backed off and she was very sweet. And I said it in a nice way. And I started playing songs that I knew these people would recognize. And absolutely the music did it itself. They started singing every now, you, it was like popcorn. You would get one start and then the other one and then the other one and they were all singing and they recognized the songs and it was so beautiful. The music brought it out. And it turns out that mom and I are watching this, this show on, on, on Amazon Prime, which is called A Place to Call Home. But there's one scene that I just saw last night and I knew I was doing this today and it was so, so appropriate. There's a woman who is like the matriarch of this very highfalutin family. And she decides that she needs to do something with her life that is meaningful. And she's 70 or 80 years old. Finally, she decides she wants to give of herself. So, so she goes to work at a, a refugee center, just like the Utica Rescue Mission, exactly the same. All men, basically, you know, kind of derelict looking guys, but she wants to do something. So she starts going there and feeding, you know, during the, the meals, she feeds them and cleans the tables, etc. And she could see that they were just kind of staring and they were not really participating. She tried to talk to them, they wouldn't talk to her. So she rolled in an upright piano one day, just out of the blue. She bought this piano and she rolled it in there and she sat down there thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? And she started playing all these old songs from the 20s and the 30s and the 40s. And initially, the guys were just looking in the air, just like I was talking about at this nursing home. And all of a sudden, each one of them started and they came up standing behind her and started to sing. And the tears were running down her face that I finally touched someone, you know? And it was exactly the same experience. And it was so ironic that I just saw that when I knew I was gonna be doing this with you today and telling you about this experience that I had. Exactly the same thing. Music is amazing. I, there's a Cafe Domenico, which is obviously well known to many people that live in the Utica, greater Utica area, Clinton, Utica. They have a piano upstairs. And I used to go there when I was up north and I would play the piano just randomly. And there were a lot of frequent flyers there. And finally, one guy came up to me and he said, you know, you love playing the piano and you love music. I have to give this to you. And he handed me a scribbled note that he found somewhere and he wasn't sure. And I just want to read it to you and to your viewers because it's so appropriate. To soothe your soul and bring a quiet mind. To comfort and caress your solitude. To bring you memories of distant days. To stir you to new hope and new endeavors. Music. The friend. The nurse the conjurer, the priest, the lover, the clown, but the comrade to us all. It was so perfect. And he gave it to me and he said, I just know you'll appreciate that. And I, it was just overwhelming. It was just so beautiful. And that shows you that my music that I played there obviously had an effect on him. So music is a wonderful thing. I mean, I, when I say I wear three hats and I'm so fortunate, music wears a hundred hats. I mean, it can be nurturing, it can be consoling, it can be uplifting, it can be sad, it can be so many things. And especially during this time of confinement and isolation where we feel that we're not really connected to the rest of the world, music connects us. It's just a wonderful, beautiful thing in the sense that it changes with each era. I mean, in the 20s, this was a typical song because everybody was upbeat, the, the economy was great. There was nothing like COVID, there was nothing like the Great Depression. Ain't she sweet? See her coming down the street. Now I ask you very confidentially, ain't she sweet? I mean, those were the kinds of songs in the 20s. People would be out there with their cigarettes and drinking and, you know, at, at, at these places where they weren't supposed to be having liquor and they're all drinking and yucking it up. And that's the kind of song that would come out. And it's, it's so different in the sense of where you're coming from. I mean, there's a song, Over the Rainbow. Everybody knows Over the Rainbow. I see it as a song of hope. Some see it as a song that's sad and depressing because the last line of Over the Rainbow is, can be taken two ways. It can be taken as, poor me, the birds can fly over the rainbow, but I can't. 
If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, why, oh, why can't I? So that's the poor me version. That's like, they fly over the rainbow, why can't I? Or there's the person that says, hey, if they can do it, why the heck can't I do it? If happy little bluebirds fly beyond the rainbow, hey, why, oh, why can't I? So songs are so, I mean, they're interpreted by the person. It's so true. And that's why I always say, you know, when you watch a movie and if you really love a movie, a lot of times it's because of where you are at that time in your life. And you can come another time and look at the movie and say, I don't know why I loved it so much then. It's because your spirit needed it. And that's why. Music is the same way. It soothes, it comforts, it consoles, it does whatever you want it to do. And it's interesting because during this time of confinement, I wanted to get in touch with friends of mine. And I thought, you know, I could text them, but somehow music exaggerates the message. So I sent a video of me singing the song For Good, which is from the play Wicked. And it basically is a story that, it, the song basically says, because I met you, I've been changed for good. And it doesn't mean for good in necessarily a positive way, although that's how I meant it. It just means forever. I've been changed forever for good. But I sang this song and I've got, I got responses from so many men and women saying, it was beautiful, but you tore out my heart. I cried. I, I, I hate you because you made me cry. And it's kind of like, you don't hate me because you cried. You cried because you needed to cry with that song. You needed to cry with that song because it brought out the important things. <laughs> it makes me cry talking about it. <laughs> but I mean, I had a friend of mine from medical school, this macho, he was a football player, et cetera. He said, that was so beautiful. He said, but I hate you because you made me cry. And I said, I didn't make you cry. You made yourself cry because you needed to remind yourself that you're sensitive and that you have this side of you that is that is precious and beautiful and you know people say as far as dancing is concerned i'll say dance like nobody's watching i say sing like nobody's listening because when you're alone and you listen to this music you can belt it out and if it makes you cry there's nothing wrong with that it's like taking a bath tears wash you and yeah you take a shower you take a bath you're clean doesn't mean you're never going to need a bath again. It means that once things wear off and you start smelling, you got to take another bath to get clean again. And it's the same thing with crying, with music, or with any other thing that brings out emotion. It makes you cry to clean you because it's, it's a purging. It's a beautiful thing. And sometime down the line, you're going to need to do it again. I mean, that's how it is. And music is such an instrument to cause that to happen. I've heard it said that people come into your lives for a reason, bringing something you must learn, and we are led to those who help us most to grow if we let them, and we help them in return. Well, I don't know if you believe that's true. But I know I am who I am today, in part because of you. Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind off the sea. Like a seed dropped from a skybird in some distant wood. Who can say if we've been changed for the better? But I do believe that we've been changed for the better. And because I knew you, because I knew you, 
because I knew you. I have been changed for good. Oh, that was awesome. I was just going to say what a wonderful message at this time. It was, that was wonderful. Absolutely. Nice. I love that song. I've heard it in a lot of, I've heard it at a funeral. I've heard it in happy times. I've, now I've heard it here. I think it's, it's so applicable for this time and a lot of times in people's lives. It's a great song. Okay. So Allie, you have the wonderful combination of being an audience member, a dear friend of mine for, I don't know, 50 years, no, like 20 years, it feels like for just decades. You were, and, you were not that good at math. It's I okay. Know. No, that's not true. I've gotten better. Um, especially not after two less of wine. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is that you were also a student. So I may not have been good at math, but were you good at piano is the question. I was terrible. Your father fired me. In fact, he drank more vodka uh, martinis than he ever had to when he was trying to teach me. But I did learn one phantom song and I played it incessantly at my awesome. parents. Awesome. And they hated it because I was just <laughs> what I would say is that music Wait, is such a vehicle to express yourself. And if people are fortunate enough to play a musical instrument, this is a time to do it. When you're confined, you, you feel frustrated, you want human connection, you, you want to be able to hug someone, you want to be able to go out to dinner and have a glass of wine with someone, and you can't do it right now. So go to your music. Go to your music and fantasize in your mind while you're playing that music that you're with the person you want to be with or that you're visiting a friend or that you're looking at your mother and saying, Mom, this is how I feel, or whatever it is. And if you're able to play it, it's awesome. If you don't play a musical instrument, then take advantage of those who do and listen to the music. And as I said, music can be very uplifting, but it can also be somewhat dis distressful. I mean, it can make you, it makes you remember older times, or it makes you remember people that are no longer in your life, or it makes you remember uh, emotional, loving moments. And there's nothing wrong with going back there. There's nothing wrong with visiting those places again. And music has such a wonderful way of taking you there. So take advantage of it and listen to those songs that bring those feelings. If they're upbeat songs, great. Get out and dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> or, <laughs> or if it's one of those sad songs, sit down with that music and a glass of wine and just cry your eyes out. You'll feel so much better because it just makes you feel great. What good are words I say to you? They can't convey to you what's in my heart. If you could hear instead the things I've left unsaid. Time after time, I tell myself that I'm so lucky to be loving you, so lucky to be the one you run to see in the evening when the day is through. I only know what I know The passing years will show You've kept my love so young So new And time after time You'll hear me say that I'm So lucky to be loving so lucky to be loved.